plus E. I uh, am going to talk about this topic here. My website was hacked, now what? Um, I want to start by asking, does anyone currently, does everyone here have a website? Do people have websites? Does anyone know if their website is currently hacked? Are you here because you need immediate triage? No? As far as we know, we're good, as far as we know. I had the, um, uh, I, I, my company, Web, Big Big Design, hosts a lot of different websites. We build and host uh, websites. We also um, build a website for people that are hosted on uh, other servers. Um, and, then, and then people just purchase and ask us for help. It's very difficult. Um, over the course of the last couple of years, we have seen um, a huge rise in the number of malware and other kinds of injection hacking of websites. Just, I mean, Back in 2005, when we started um, doing websites, it wasn't such a big issue. This year, um, I've uh, seen the same the same website hacked four or five times, um, and for different like, different websites for different reasons, um, different um, routes in, uh, all sorts of different things going on. Now, uh, this uh, picture here, this image, is from a website that was um, hacked earlier this year, uh, in, in a particularly sort of malicious way, where the people. Um, didn't just kind of get in there with some purpose of their own where they um, wanted maybe to um, somehow benefit themselves, but instead they put this image up and they deleted everything in the website, including all the databases and, and everything. <coughs> on the website that I was hosting, and so I didn't, wasn't really taking care of their backups for them, and they didn't run any backups, so it was a very sad day for that person. Um, so, this is what I want not to happen to you, but if something awful should happen to your website, um, I'm here to tell you a little bit about how you should go about addressing that problem and um, also how to make your life um, safer in the future. It's impossible to completely um, protect uh, a website from being hacked, you know, completely shut it down, unless you just simply take it off the web. It's not really as useful if it's not actually out there. Um, but we can reduce the amount of risk and we can have plans for what to do if something were to happen. So that's what we're going to talk about today. This is another kind of um, uh, issue that we're seeing on some websites. This earlier this year, this is back in March, there really was a, a whole sort of wave of malware injection um, uh, things into the WordPress. WordPress being um, certainly of the open source of, uh, content management systems, but really of, of um, all sorts of content management systems on the web, the most widely used. This was a big problem for the web. They would do things like this where when you visited, um, a site, it would invite you to, to um, download what it said was um, uh, antivirus protection software, and the antivirus protection software was itself actually the virus. So, um, uh, this is the kind of thing that could happen, and again, it actually is a little bit better to have this happen if you're from the web, web owner's perspective, because we'll probably be able to ferret this out and fix it, as opposed to the previous one where you just have to hope you have a backup. But either way, it's not a good thing. Um, when someone comes to me that they, and they've had their uh, website hacked, um, usually their first, their first sentence is simply help me. But then their second thing is, what do they want? Why are they attacking me? And they, they might want any of a number of different things. They, um, they might be trying to uh, do it very, very secretively in a way that's going to somehow boost the um, search engine um, ranking of other websites by putting in subtle hit, um, links. This is actually um, still going on, even though those links don't have quite the impact that they used to have. Um, but that's, that's one reason that they might do it. A second reason that they might do it is um, they want to um, fish for your information when you're logging in. We're seeing a number of these, particularly, again, people are posting with WordPress. What we're seeing is that it'll um, they'll insert some code into the login script itself. So as you type in your login information, that information gets sent off somewhere else in addition to login. Very similar, really, to how um, you know how ATMs they they have equipment now that will um, steal your password from your ATM by coming a little. You see these things? That, I, mean, I hope you haven't seen them in person, but I've seen them on the news um, where they have a little fake card thing on top, and they steal your, your code, they steal your keys, and you are sad. Um, so that that is similarly what they're doing with websites. Um, sometimes, um, and this I've seen just in this past week, they'll redirect. Um, anyone who comes to the site to a malware or phishing site, and they can be tricky about this. They can do this um, where what they want is for you not to notice, you the site and not to notice right away that they're doing it. So they will 
only redirect people who come from Google or come from Facebook or come from a phone. So when you check your site, that looks perfectly fine. But when someone um, clicks a link to come to visit your site, then they're the ones who get sent somewhere else. And one more. Otherwise, they can completely delete your website. That's what happened to my uh, to my poor friends there who had this strange, scary um, man in black uh, to go to their site. I also had um, one other one happen this year, um, and I don't actually know what this particular attack was doing. But they had gotten in and they had gotten into the configuration file of the site, and they had said that okay, now all of the information, all the data, and so forth for the site is not going to be written to my database, but to someone else's database somewhere else. And so my whole site's data was being stored on some other server somewhere. Okay, I still have not figured out what exactly they were trying to do with that, other than they were setting it up for future. So I'm sorry. Um, but whatever the reason was, fortunately I was able to sort of see it and get rid of it. The second question is, um, after they say, what do they want? I mean, why are they doing this? There's a lot of reasons they might be, um, uh, as I say, trying to steal your to steal information from the people, that, um, whether it's some sort of a, a financial monetary issue type like scheme or any of the number of other things. A lot of times it seems like all they're really trying to do is just amuse themselves. And I'm sorry to have to tell clients that. I can't really explain why someone finds that fun to just kind of ruin your day. Um, a lot of times in this kind of case. Whatever their reason is, though, um, we there, there are issues about websites that actually do make them vulnerable. And so the biggest thing seems to be the out, is outdated software. So keeping your website up to date is an important um, uh, means of defense. The second might be um, out, uh, problems in the extensions or the things you've added on to your software. Um, you always want to have any extension that you get for any um, website that you, you um, install, you want to make sure that you're getting it from a reputable source. Uh, I teach um, classes here at Point Park University, and I um, forbid any of my students, I can count them into the ranks, never, never, never Google phrase free WordPress templates. It's just a terrible, terrible thing, because you'll be sent to any of a number of sites. There are lots of legitimate sources of free templates and themes and plugins, but you know, finding them through a search engine is a poor choice. There's just too much uh, bad code that's out there. So the, those, those vulnerabilities are a big, big issue. The fact that many of the um, content management systems that we use today uh, are so widely used, this, that itself is kind of a vulnerability. Open source means that anybody can see any of your code that's in there. Um, and so people who, again, just for the lulls, just to reward, spend their time looking for a way to hack their way in, just for the fun of it, right? Um, but the other piece of, kind of open source is that as soon as that hole was found, somebody else is going to be able to fix it. So ultimately, as long as we're keeping them up to date, we can hope to at least get a good um, a little barrier to the people getting in there. Um, I'm seeing in shared hosting, and in particular in shared cloud hosting setups, that there are um, um, holes between one site and another site. So that if one site gets infected, even if it's not yours, um, uh, through different various back doors within the, the hosting itself, um, one, another site can get infected. And um, the, the phishing that I talked about through the login through the email, um, I've seen that twice so far just this year. Uh, so I think that it uses all the other pieces that are in there, um, like getting able to get your login, and can also get to other things. Um, the way that you communicate with your hosting for your database and for the files as well, if that's not secure, then all of, all of your transmissions are secure. It's not unlike, um, say, using your cell phone um, to, um, to or you should, you know, to give off your credit card number. People can listen in and, and pass on to these things, so that's also not wise. Similarly, non secured FTP is a vulnerability. Non secured FTP that you do maybe from the um, free Wi Fi at Poppy House, even worse. Um, and then finally, just site owner neglect. People set up a website and they don't really check in on it, they don't really take care of it and see how it's doing. Um, any of these things is going to be how your site gets brought down. That is really not real. What I mean, these are this is what's going on um, uh, when your site is hacked. Though, no matter what the cause is, you basically have to get around to getting it fixed right away. So, first thing to do is save the evidence. Actually, keep track of what has happened. 
when I first saw, for example, when I saw on the site with the Spirit Man, or really any of these, it's, oh my god, let's just get this picture away. Um, it's useful, though, to make a complete backup of everything, all of the bad code, um, to keep track of it in case later on, for any of the variety of reasons, you need to figure out who it was that did that or what was going on. Um, so, um, saving the evidence, and I can be a pretending that you're a forensic scientist, make a copy of, what, um, of what's there. Once you've done that, you can start to think about um, protecting yourself, kind of getting everything nailed down. First thing is to make sure that the computers that you're using that actually have access to your site are themselves secure. Make sure that those computers um, don't have malware on them themselves, and, and then it's really the website that's being hacked and not something else that's so coming from your, your PC or your uh, Mac or your laptop, whatever it is, that's the source of the trouble. Um, if you're being spied on while you're trying to do all these other fixing things, you're not really going to put yourself in any better situation. My next step is to change all the passwords. These are the passwords for the, con the content management system itself, uh, the FTP passwords. So they also give you account passwords, it depends on how many there are. If you've got a bunch of FTP passwords, every single one of those has to change. Get rid of any extras that you don't really need. Get rid of any extra users that you don't really need. Update all of those. And then all of the database passwords as well. In WordPress, and other content management systems may have something similar. In the configuration file, there are typically some kind of security keys and codes, things that try to help to lock down the cookies that um, let the computer know that you're already logged into a website. Um, so in WordPress, for example, you should go in and update that stuff that's in the config file. And in other content management systems, it's a little bit similar to that other, other tools. So what we've done now so far is we have made copies of everything, and we have, we're trying to lock out the bad guys from watching what we do as we do the rest of the cleanup. Now, uh, again, make another backup of the, comp of the compromised file. Everything should be all safe. Files in the database. And now we're going to start to clean up the site. This is the uh, time consuming part. There's a couple things you can do. The first choice is to just take everything down and put up a fresh copy of the site. This is, uh, may seem kind of a, uh, a drastic step, but if you've got a solid, um, clean backup that you know is clean from not too long ago, then that's going to be your easiest choice. Easiest thing. Um, I rarely have this, this option though, uh, because often there'll be, um, uh, the, well, that could be one choice. And then the other option is you may need to clean up files one by one. And more often than not, this, this ends up being at least part of the solution, going through and looking at the files. And, and you can think of how many files there are in a, in a website, um, but we can trim down and figure out which ones to focus on and actually clean them up and start them. What I look for when I'm finding injected code is a couple of different things. Um, the files themselves, if there is going to be injection code, it's typically going to be at the very top of the file or at the bottom of the file, which just kind of makes sense. Remember that a lot of this injection code um, is put in automatically by other computer code, and it's just easiest for it to put it at the top or the bottom. If it puts it somewhere in the middle randomly, it's probably going to break the code of the site itself, which isn't quite what they're aiming for. So you'll typically see um, injection code at the top of the file, the bottom of the file, and also the top of the web page and the bottom of the web page. I've seen it as an iframe, too. Yes, it can be as an iframe. When it is an iframe, they have to fit it in, though, at a place where it's not going to break the code around. Right. That was the point. They might put it right after the body tag in a couple of different places. I'm also seeing um, HT access files, um, which are the sort of the uh, high level files that um, kind of do the overall control of the site. These will often have redirections in them. This so not that happened to the Podcam Pittsburgh website two weeks ago. It sure did. The, po the um, Podcam Pittsburgh website is one of the ones that we had to fix. Fortunately, it was a very small hack in that it consisted entirely of an ejection to the HD access file. That's an example, actually, of one where you only saw the hack if you looked at the website through a mobile device. In fact, I think I have a picture of the code for that. This is, this is the HD access file, because I do keep copies of the, of the sites that I bring down. And this is, um, uh, this is actually one that's the same, same uh, tab, but um, different sites. Uh, the podcast site is a little bit more going down here. But this is actually the, the rewrite that happens before the other stuff. 
And you can see, I don't know what you guys can read from there, but what it's asking is the user agent, in other words, the browser that is the, the thing that is looking at this code, if it is, um, and these are all names of different devices, Ericsson, Blackberry, um, why they have my phone, blah, 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 blah. If that, then go, you know, if you want to rewrite to this and you want to go to uh, this site, this is where you end up being sent, which is a porn site. It's an app. It's an app. Oh, was it really an app? Oh, see. Oh. It was uh, but so the HD access files and also just the index.php files, which are the main files that get executed in pretty much any directory, those tend to be very vulnerable. So those are sort of important ones to check. Okay. Now, when I'm looking for injected code, these are the things that I tend to look for first. I check all of, I, I sort of can very quickly skim the dates of um, when each file in the site was last updated. It's a really quick way to kind of see, you know, narrow down your search a little bit and see what's going on. And look for something that's been changed recently and out of sync with the rest of the changes in the site. If you installed your site last year and there's one file or one set of files that she got changed five hours ago, those are probably the files that are in the uh, also look for um, obfuscated gibberish type scripting language. I'm going to show you an example of that. Um, and then different um, unescape or eval um, executions and any kind of redirection. So here's an example of a, um, this is a, a theme, this is a WordPress theme. And if you look, you can see all the different things in the theme, the author, template, all these other things. And then over here, this theme was apparently installed probably February 5th of this year. All the dates are the same, 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 same. And then here, these three files um, were updated in August. Um, they were all updated at the exact same time, which means either some kind of update ran or something's going on with them. And it turns out that the three files are footer, header, index. Um, so clearly, um, it turned out that this, is, uh, this was a hack that really targeted WordPress targeted things that it knew were going to be in WordPress themes. The footer, footer.php is very good. I think almost many, many of the index.php pages, all of them, and header.php is in that most of them. And what that ended up putting in at the end of each of those files is a chunk of code like this. When I talk about gibberish obfuscated code, this is a bit of scripting that starts after whatever was in the file. This is a comment, and then here this PHP starts. And what it does is it does a redirection thing. So it, Kind of this little error report and it turns that off so it's not a complaint the user doesn't really know quite what's going on. I actually don't know what this does <laughs> other than redirect you. Um, and then down here, I mentioned the eval, um, that's what's going on down this bit here. So that is, um, I use Dreamweaver to edit HTML and Dreamweaver um, makes this stuff look all red so it's very easy to make this off. As I said, this is a different kind of regression. Um, you mentioned iframes as a very common way. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Um, I'm not sure if, uh, the, uh, where it originated or anything like that, but I had a client's website that uh, uh, Google automatically said, you know, this site has malware, for, you know, procedure caution, or you know, just don't do it. And uh, so after looking the code, it affected all the uh, uh, index.html. Files and uh, so I had to go through the client site and delete it. And I tried to uh, go through the CSS to say, you know, hit you know, to make the iframe hit, and before I was able to you know, get it to uh, change the passwords. And I to like a temporary it. patch to try yeah. to get that off. Yeah, and so it lasted for uh, maybe a, a few hours or so, but it just seemed like it kept getting. Every time I would delete it and upload the file, it would get replaced. Right. Because you weren't able to reset all the passwords first. Right. You were able to reset the passwords first, then yeah. it's not that. So, what, what an iframe is, is basically a little window in a website, and that window looks onto another website. Basically, it's loading a chunk of code or a page from another web document somewhere. Um, and that's a nice way to inject evil code because you can have all your evil code written somewhere else and all you've got to do is put this little frame that looks back onto the evil space. Um, and so, uh, as you're saying, you can do things to try to block those iframes in a variety of ways, um, but that they're going to still keep popping up if you don't follow the same procedures. Okay. 
but it is a really common, common thing. And they'll stick those windows in anywhere on the page and with the idea that people will accidentally click on them. Okay, so what have we done so far? We have um, relocked down our doors by resetting all of our passwords. We um, um, cleaned everything up. Um, and now we are ready to, so, so now, now is the time to relax just a little bit. Okay, things are looking pretty good. I will usually keep an eye on the website for a while uh, pretty closely to make sure there isn't a reinfection. Because um, I think maybe I caught everything, but it's possible that they've got some extra sneaky somewhere, something somewhere else, or there was a password that I didn't know about, or while I was resetting some of the passwords, some other ones, they were able to patch it again. Um, so keep a, keep kind of a close eye on it. I think it was sort of like intensive care, you know, at a hospital. It's just kind of keeping keeping close look on it. In the meantime, and here's where um, having a copy of the evil code is useful. Try to identify where it was that things went wrong in the first place. You've already shut other things down, and that's useful. But we'd like to make sure that we know what was going on. So I'll typically take a look at the code, see if there are some recurring. URLs being mentioned, and then do a Google search to see if anyone else is seeing, see if other people are having the same kind of issue with their sites. I'm trying to learn what's going on there. So, uh, not too bad. It's only um, 121, we've already cured our website. Uh, it's a terrible infection. The thing about all of this is, um, it typically does take a pretty long time. The case of um, uh, a site where there's just one file that was um, hacked, and, you know, you can fix that pretty quickly. A site where like, every theme has been hacked or every plugin has been hacked is going to take a lot longer. In a way, the best thing to do is to not is to try to reduce the chance of it happening in the first place uh, and to make it easy to repair later on. So, when I think about protecting websites, um, the first thing I think about, as I mentioned earlier, insecure communication with the website is a terrible hole for you. So. Uh, First recommendation is to always use um, secure transmissions to talk to your website, to copy files up and down, um, and to connect to it. So using SFTP and SSH rather than easier connections. It's really important. In fact, I'm starting to see that those two companies will insist that you use that, and they're no longer going to need to use FTP to connect to your hosting space. The next piece is to protect that HT access file. So that because it is such an important file, HT access. You want to make it so it can't be written by just everybody, uh, even on your own file server, just as a precaution. So you can set its permission level to be lower than other sites, other files on the hosting, and yet still be accessible so they can be used as part of your website hosting. We're going to keep the software itself up to date, um, particularly with an eye to any security updates that come out for your website, not just the um, software itself, but also any uh, plugins, and then remove any stuff that you like put in there and kind of try it out, or old themes, old designs for the site. Get rid of anything that's in there that you're not really using anymore. This just acts as a vulnerability for you, a dead way for someone to get in. You want to be smart about usernames and passwords. So, for example, uh, again, I'll talk about WordPress because I use it a lot. The, by default, when you install WordPress, WordPress suggests to you that your um, administrator, your username, be admin. Now, we all have an admin, uh, uh, you know, a super user named admin. And, um, that, that's one easier way for a new person to apply to. So choose um, unique usernames as well as secure passwords. A second thing you can actually do with um, WordPress in particular, WordPress assumes by default um, all the tables in WordPress are um, start with the prefix WP underscore. But they allow you to choose a different um, uh, prefix for all your tables. If you choose um, something random, so maybe WP and then three numbers and then your underscore, your, support, your website is still going to work just fine, but it will be a little bit harder for um, you know, a hacker to get in there and play with it. Probably they'll still be able to do it particularly if they're doing it intelligently, but a, a low level hacking kit might not be able to do quite the same amount of damage. Okay. I want to just mention about um, passwords. Um, I'm an IT consultant, and we deal with mostly PCs. And we find that people never change their passwords, and they use really stupid passwords, like the name of their kids, or something that's easily figured out. 
And so we try and tell people to use passphrases all the time. Those little monitors that say good, better, best password, they really help because the people who change their passwords and use stronger passwords have less of a chance of getting hacked in all different places. I've seen studies that, that, that back up what you're saying, that using a, a, um, a, a phrase of three short words, um, um, comfy blue chair, but using three words that don't really go together, so comfy blue sage, you know, that can be easily remembered by you but um, part, so at least remember, but complicated, it's, it's as complicated to a computer as a random selection of words because it can't be you know, looked up in a dictionary. It's as hard for them to sort of hard, um, reinforce um, half as anything else. So, so yeah, half phrase can be more And then changing all the apps to fives, for example, or changing the S's to dollar signs. Something that you're going to remember, but it's going to be a lot harder for them to generate. But to combine that, it's not enough to say stage with like the E and stage as yeah. E and app. Yeah. You yeah. need to do both of those techniques in yes. combination to make it really secure. Yes. Great point. You want to be vigilant about other things going on your site, including comments, spam. Um, seems like no big deal, but that's going to bring down your ranking overall. If there's a lot of spam on your site, it's just going to leave you, um, leave you looking a little bit stupid and maybe make you a little bit more targeted. Uh, and then um, uh, slow down the login attempts of your site. So if someone's trying to hack your site and they are trying to guess your password, if they're doing it with an automated tool, um, you would like it to either um, your, your um, website to either force people to only do so many attempts and then take 20 minutes off, or uh, only do uh, one attempt every 20 seconds, at least putting a little bit of delay. And WordPress is a plugin, the limit login with, um, limit logins attempt plugin. Which is a useful one. Pretty simple. Um, and if you're if you're a blog into your site no problem, you can choose how many attempts they're allowed to do, and you can choose the delay between them. If you look at the map of it, um, just even limiting the number of attempts and extending the pause in between, you know, the six bad attempts and the next time they try, that will uh, increase the hack time from like a thousand years to infinity. Um, so it's a very simple thing. Uh, it creates a lot more security for your site. David, you're looking. Sorry. You're looking concerned. Oh, I, I, I uh, cleaned up some comment spam on my blog. I was, I was just curious as to uh, was that just someone trying to add an advertisement for the Hong Kong porn site that they had, or was that indicative of a hack? It was probably more just someone trying to add a link to their Hong Kong porn site. Um, but all of these things as a whole are going to make it more likely that you get blacklisted um, and then it's harder to get back on. Um, but it also it just increases your vulnerabilities. Usually your, your commenting tool will not allow people to put iframes and other people code in there. So that's not usually the problem um, for any sensible content management system. Um, but even so, it's just, it's just important. Is there a way, I mean, we've got 6,000 uh, blog posts. Is there a way to easily find all of the comments, man? You know? It depends on, sorry, it uh, depends on your, your blogging, your website tool, which is which. A blogger. I don't know what, how blogger, I don't know if there's anyone here who's like a real blogger hero. Uh, so I don't know what they've got for that. Um, Typically, again, this is just a little bit off topic, but for the comment spam, um, what we see for comment spam is that the longer in the past the blog post is, the more likely any fresh comment on it is, is going to be spam. So a, a simple thing to do, um, and I know WordPress builds this in, uh, and I imagine you can get a tool to do it for almost anywhere else, is um, after a post is 60 days old, I'm not going to turn out comments to that post. I do know that um, longer when you go into comments, it stacks all of the comments by chronologically by the most recently posted, mm -hmm. not where the comment is. So if I go in today and someone has posted a comment on a blog post from three years ago, I can take a look at it and... Uh, right, that's going to be, you can see fresh comments pretty quickly. Yeah. Right. But you might just think, you know, a five-year-old post, probably no one's going to comment on it, you know, in a sensible way, so maybe just... Yeah. 
can, can you enable a capture? Sorry? A capture, you know, where it tries to... You can also put a capture code on to, to check your spam. You're getting oh, okay. the um, There's a free tool uh, from, now it's, now it's done by Google, but recapture is a thing that printed email in um, some years back. And okay. that's like, you know, it's the thing that puts the two very almost unreadable words. Yeah. And so right. when you type them in, you're helping to translate uh, scan documents and make them a better place. Um, so, um, kind of in keeping with what I was talking about, about watching for when files have changed on your site, that was a thing that was sort of an issue, um, you'll want to just monitor the changes to your site. Again, don't abandon your site, keep a close eye on it. There's a plugin for WordPress um, File Monitor Plus, which will just tell you there's a new file on your site. And if you know there's a new file on your site, you're not going to be surprised. If you were not expecting there to be a new file on your site, then you'll be alerted right away. It runs as a cron job, so it runs periodically, but even so, it's going to make, make catch faster than you might catch it, and you might notice that there's a problem. Uh, you can also um, scan for malware in a variety of ways. Um, there are services that do this. Uh, security is one. Um, and in fact, some hosting companies automatically fill that in. So for example, we, we moved all of our website hosting for WordPress sites to a company called WP Engine. I'm not um, getting a kickback for telling you this, but um, what they do, um, this, the security um, malware scanning happens automatically as part of this, and they will recover your website for free if it does get hacked. Um, so security also has a free malware scan. Anytime you're not real sure whether there's something going wrong with your site, it's not going to catch necessarily everything, but it is going to look for some fairly common malware and other issues. Have you tried the uh, Cloudflare? I'm not really with Cloudflare. No, no, no. Tell me more about it. Um, you change your DNS to, so whenever somebody goes to your site, it will go through their server first. They keep a, a, a cache of your site, and then it will go into yours. So they'll scan it for um, anything that's sus uh, suspicious. They have a, a database of uh, uh, known attackers, and they can say, you know, we recognize this IP, you know, this is harmful. You have the choice of either blocking it or blocking it. And so they're watching everybody that's looking at your site. Exactly. Yeah. They were uh, scanning all traffic coming in. Interesting. So, yeah, and, and it's free. Cloudflare? Cloudflare. Um, there's another thing that's kind of related to what you're talking about. And this requires a little bit of code on your part. Um, if, but if you're comfortable writing scripts um, and things on the server side, you can write a cron job. You can like effectively take a snapshot of your site or the pages of your site that you're most the files in your um, site that you're most concerned about. Um, and then just uh, maybe once a day or however often, com um, compare files to files, whether it's looking at every single file or sort of a checksum or something along those lines. It's a little bit here, a little bit harder, but um, that that's a way of doing effectively what these kind of companies are doing. Cloudflare sounds a little bit different because they're also sort of saying, hey, this is a known bad guy looking at your site, so you've got to keep an eye on. Um, there's another, uh, this is a free thing, this is from um, uh, AVG Antivirus. They too have a link scanner. This is useful too if you want to visit a site and like, you pull up a site that's not your word perhaps and you get one of those like, ah, 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 um, whatever, forms with screens, big red screens on Google um, and you just kind of want to take another look at it another way, you can put it in here and they'll take a look for you. Um, Okay, and finally, uh, Google Webmaster Tools will also alert you uh, if you've got issues on your site, if, once, if you've already registered your site sort of with Google Webmaster Tools, which offers an awful lot of interesting stuff. Things that you used to be able to see um, through Google Analytics, you can no longer see for quote, privacy reasons. Another session that I'll talk I'll, I'll rant about some changes that Google Analytics made last year. But um, you used to be able to see all the keywords that people were using um, to look at your site, and now they don't let you see all of them, only a certain subset. Um, but Google Webmaster Tools still lets you see all of the phrases and keywords that people are using to get to your site through Google. Um, and so that alone is reason enough to use Google Webmaster Tools. They also have the web um, malware scanning and will alert you if there's something going on with your site that they have seen. Well, questions, uh, issues. Has anyone um, uh, seen a particularly weird hack that I haven't, haven't happened to mention? Free 
for me, the weirdest one was that one where it has been that one where the database, my database, was being stored somewhere else. Every new post that I wrote was not being stored on my site. It's very weird. It's unheard of. Yeah, that is weird. I haven't heard that. Yeah, I don't even know what they were trying to do. But because I knew that they were doing it, I was able to use WordPress tools to export the data from their database, get rid of their database settings, put mine back in, and then re my own posts. If you go back to where you uh, made a capture of, of the bad code, uh -huh. and if you look down at the, the spot where it's calling back to another website. There's different ones. I mean, I yeah, and that's often the case. Once you have the name of that website, it's a good chance that that's happened to a lot of people. You can Google for that. Yeah, I think I was trying to say that. But, I mean, that's why I try to keep a copy of what um, has been going wrong. And I can take a look. Some of them, well, this, I had to shrink it down to even just be able to show you. But um, this one was not quite as easy to say where it was that they were sending you. This one was simpler. This one was just a redirect. Um, it's this crazy luck yeah. Um, awesome. Uh, yeah. So, um, so yeah, you can do that and then kind of look up who it was that was being so evil. Cynthia, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Um, so this was actually like something somebody checked on when he was on this. Yes, this is a HTTPS file on a WordPress on a WordPress site. That's right. And it only redirects people if they visit from on cell phone. It's perfect. I I had a uh, thing in the uh, blog months ago, um, a reader had emailed me asking if we'd been hacked because when he accessed the thing, it was it immediately redirected, or after maybe two seconds, redirected to some kind of news site. It wasn't a porn site. Or but when I did it, it was fine. And then maybe three days later, I suffered the same thing that the other guy had, but no one else did. I mean, what? Uh, there could be a couple different things going on there. Uh, my first guess is that it, because you didn't get directed, but they did was that maybe you were logged in or you had some kind of cookie or something some um, something still in your cache that was being used and a person visiting the site relatively fresh was not getting that. So you might temporarily not see the problem that someone else is seeing. That would have been my first guess. If it, if it came and went, sometimes I've, been, I've had people come to me and say, my site has been hacked, it only happens at certain times, and I go and I look at it and I literally cannot find anything. It doesn't mean nothing happened. Could mean that they had something in there for a while and they took it back out. So I would still want to resell the passwords in that case. Um, I've had like experiences as like like on social media websites, like uh, Twitter, for example. I'd be hacked. I change my password, and then like Facebook or something, some other social media would be hacked. Is there any way? Like how how does that exactly? I don't actually know as much about, about the social media okay. hacking thing. I don't know if someone else here have any experience with that. I, I, I can just say that I know uh, I've had two separate clients that have a WordPress sites and hacked. Uh, it was like a reverse engineer of the Facebook app ID they have been using for Facebook commenting. Uh, and they can create a new Facebook and set up and create an app. To the so they, they made an app that was a phishing app. Right? Yeah, and, it just, and that's how they just gain access to WordPress. Come to think of it, I mean, the ones that I can think of that are kind of like that are, you know, obviously the ones where you get DM'd a message like someone saying something nasty about you, take a look, and you click that link and then you have malware in your browser or on your, um, the social engineering piece seems like the social media stuff kind of relies on that. Or on that, I should say, on Facebook and Facebook. I don't know though why you would have been targeted from Twitter and then to Facebook. It's like they're chasing you, being stopped. Yeah, yeah, like, maybe. Uh, Unless you had a tool that was that you were using to, um, you know, if you posted to Twitter, it was posting like Hootsuite. You know, where you, if you posted in one place, you posted in the other place as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I do have that, but when I clicked on that, it wasn't like I think what I clicked on was like it was something like my friend. I thought it was my friend. Said like you know here's a here's a video you should check out or something. I was right. like, oh you know it sounds you know whatever. Yeah. And then my Twitter started sending advertisements out, and then they would send them through tweets and messages. And then my Facebook was sending the same messages like 20 minutes later. It didn't make any sense to me. But so that does seem like yeah, it was a, somehow someone else was hacked. And it's it's a it really is like a virus. Thing. Yeah yeah yeah. 
I think the thing to be is to be, um, we now have to be that much more cagey about, I mean, we know not to click links in emails that look goofy, but um, it's so much harder at Twitter when we have so many characters in the first place. Yeah, that's... It's about, yeah, especially if it's coming from, you know, somebody like you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have one more image for you, which is to say, so assuming that we do all these things, we protect our websites, we put up our, our, our things, there may still be evil things that happen to our websites. It's, it's really, as I was saying before, kind of impossible to lock it down completely. But if you do have solid backups, and if you do um, put in these things, it's gonna reduce your, the chance of you being uh, hacked quite a bit. So you will at least hopefully be able to sleep comfortably at night. And if not, you can look at this kind of picture of a kitten and be at least calm. I should add you to <laughs> That's what I got. Yay.